Have you ever thought to yourself, I'm just not a math person? So many people feel this way. It's a common story we tell ourselves. We see a bunch of numbers and symbols on a page and our brains just freeze up. It feels like everyone else was born with a special math gene that we missed out on. This feeling can start in school, maybe after one bad test or a confusing lesson. We decide then and there that math is not for us. But I'm here to tell you that this idea is a total myth. It's like saying you can't ever be strong because you couldn't lift a heavy box one time. The truth is, nobody is born a math person or a not a math person. Math isn't a magical talent that only a few chosen people have. It's a skill, just like learning to read, play an instrument, or even text on your phone. Think about it. When you first saw a book, did you instantly know how to read every word? Of course not. You had to learn the alphabet first. Then you learned how to put the letters together to make sounds and words. Math works in the exact same way. It's a language of patterns and logic, and anyone can learn to speak it with a little bit of practice and patience. Think about learning to ride a bike. Do you remember that? At first, it probably seemed impossible. You wobbled, you fell, and maybe you even got a few scrapes on your knees. It was frustrating. You might have wanted to give up and just walk everywhere forever, but you didn't. You got back on the bike. You kept trying, maybe with someone holding the seat to help you balance. Slowly, you started to get the hang of it. You learned how to pedal and steer at the same time. One day, it just clicked, and suddenly you were riding all by yourself. Learning math is so much like that wobbly bicycle. You will have moments where you feel like you're going to fall. You'll get problems wrong, and you'll feel confused. That is a totally normal and expected part of the process. It doesn't mean you are bad at math. It just means you are learning something new and challenging. Every time you try again, Every time you work through a tricky problem, you are building your balance. You are strengthening those math muscles in your brain. The key is to not give up after the first wobble. You have to get back on and keep pedaling. So, how do you start training your brain for math? The first step is simple but super important. Practice a little bit every day. You don't need to spend hours and hours solving problems until your head hurts. Just 15 or 20 minutes of focused practice can make a huge difference. Consistency is way more powerful than cramming everything in at the last minute. Think of it like a workout routine. You wouldn't go to the gym for eight hours on a Sunday and then do nothing for the rest of the week, right? You get stronger by doing a little bit of exercise regularly. Your brain works the same way. Another huge step is to not be afraid to ask for help when you need it. This is a big one. Sometimes we feel embarrassed to admit that we don't understand something. We worry that people will think we're not smart. But asking for help is actually one of the smartest things you can do. Your teachers, your friends, your parents, or even online tutors are there to support you. They can explain things in a new way that might make everything click into place. Everyone learns differently, so sometimes all you need is a different perspective to see the solution clearly. Asking questions shows you're engaged and determined to learn. It's also important to remember that even the most brilliant people struggled. Albert Einstein, one of the most famous scientists in history, had trouble with math when he was young. His teachers thought he was slow and wouldn't amount to much. But he didn't let that stop him. He kept working, he kept asking questions, and he followed his curiosity. He proved that struggling with something at first doesn't define your future. It's the effort you put in that truly matters. So when you're feeling frustrated, remember Einstein. Your struggles are not a sign of failure. They are a sign that you are on the path to success. To really build your math skills, you have to start with the basics and make sure they are solid. It's like building a house. You can't put up the walls and the roof before you have a strong foundation. In math, that foundation is things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you feel shaky on those concepts, it's okay to go back and review them. Spending time strengthening your understanding of the fundamentals will make learning more advanced topics, like algebra or geometry, so much easier. Don't rush ahead. Give yourself the time to build a foundation that can support all your future learning. Let's talk about something that everyone tries to avoid, 
making mistakes. From a young age, we are taught that getting the wrong answer is bad. We see that red X on our paper and we feel a sense of failure. But what if I told you that mistakes are actually your secret superpower in learning math? That's right. Every single time you make a mistake, you are given a fantastic opportunity. It's your brain's way of showing you exactly where you need to focus your attention. A wrong answer isn't a dead end. It's a signpost pointing you in the right direction. It tells you, hey, let's look at this part a little more closely. When you get a problem wrong, don't just erase it and move on. Take a moment to be a detective. Look at your work and try to figure out where you went off track. Did you add when you were supposed to multiply? Did you forget a negative sign? This process of finding your error is one of the most powerful learning moments you can have. It's like your brain is creating a new, stronger connection. Neurologists have even studied this. They've found that your brain grows more when you grapple with a mistake than when you get a problem right instantly. So embrace your errors as clues on your learning adventure. Having a positive attitude, or what some people call a growth mindset, is everything. This is the belief that your intelligence can grow and develop with effort. It's the opposite of a fixed mindset, which is the belief that you're either smart or you're not, and you can't change it. When you have a growth mindset, you see challenges as opportunities, not threats. You see mistakes as learning tools, not as proof that you're bad at math. Just shifting your thinking from, I can't do this to I can't do this yet can change your entire experience with math. It opens up the possibility for improvement and makes the journey a lot more fun. This positive mindset helps you stay motivated when things get tough. Instead of getting discouraged and giving up, you'll feel curious about finding the solution. You'll start to see math problems as puzzles to be solved rather than chores to be completed. Praising your effort instead of just the result can help build this mindset. For example, instead of just being happy about getting an A, be proud of yourself for working hard, for not giving up on a tough problem and for asking for help. This focus on the process, not just the final grade, is what builds true confidence and resilience. One of the best ways to keep a positive attitude is to make math fun and connect it to your own life. Math isn't just a bunch of boring problems in a textbook, it's everywhere. Do you love video games? They are built on geometry and logic. Are you into baking? That involves fractions and measurements. Do you follow a sports team? You can use statistics to track your favorite player's performance. When you start to see math in the things you already enjoy, it stops feeling like a foreign language and starts feeling relevant to your world. Look for the math hiding in your hobbies. You can also turn learning into a game. There are so many cool apps and websites that use puzzles and challenges to teach math concepts. You can compete with your friends to see who can solve problems the fastest or earn the most points. This can make practicing feel less like homework and more like playing. You could even try solving math riddles or logic puzzles. These activities stretch your brain in a fun, low-pressure way. The goal is to change your relationship with math. Instead of seeing it as a scary monster, you can start to see it as a playful and interesting friend who challenges you to be smarter. Remember, your journey with math is a marathon, not a sprint. There will be good days and there will be challenging days. The key is to be kind to yourself and celebrate your progress along the way. Did you finally understand a concept that was confusing you for weeks? That's a huge win. Did you have the courage to ask a question in class? Pat yourself on the back. Acknowledge your hard work and your small victories. This positive reinforcement will keep you motivated and remind you that you are capable of growing and learning. Every step forward, no matter how small, is a step in the right direction. Ultimately, I want you to know, deep down, that you are totally capable of being good at math. It is not a special gift reserved for a select few. It is a skill that is available to anyone who is willing to put in the effort and approach it with the right mindset. By practicing regularly, embracing your mistakes as learning opportunities, asking for help when you need it, and keeping a positive attitude, you can unlock your own math superpowers. It might not happen overnight, but with persistence and patience, you will be amazed at what you can achieve. So go ahead. Give it a try. You can do this.